Hello on a fine afternoon, uh, five o'clock right now, the sun's just overcast and it's a perfect time to do uh, window framing around the head property. The sun's not directly on the uh, south facing wall. What I'm showing you, what I'm doing is, is what I did yesterday. And what I've done is, I created a traditional frame for around the window. And I like it because if you look at the frame, it's roughly one inch off the wall. And it really does mount the framework in the window lovely. It, I, I wanted it to look like stone. Yeah, so Andrew wanted it to look uh, like a traditional stone. Now, it's very expensive to buy the stone and put it on. It's easy to cast it yourself, a, a, a material which I'll be showing you how to do it, and create the perfect frame to go around the window. Now, you have an option with the materials that you use. You can paint it or you can seal it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal it, but that will keep the original look of the uh, material I'm using around the window. But if you look carefully, what I've done is I've also created a little mosquito shutter to go on side. Because there's one thing you get in Portugal at night time, when the wind isn't on, is you get a lot of mosquitoes. And it's, it's how, sometimes it's horrendous, but apart from that you can live So, So when it's windy you don't really get the mosquitoes? No, but not when, when it's windy. When it's calm and yeah. still you get mosquitoes so i'm going to show you how to put one of these on and make sure it's fixed right and it doesn't come off and the materials you need to create a frame to go a traditional frame to go around the windows all your materials and all your equipment all ready when you start your job like this make sure you've got everything organized now the window itself and the costings roughly cost between 10 to 15 euros to make to put on the wall it's a big difference actually getting a pre-cast one which can cost you anything from 200 to 300 euros if not more so and, and the end result is just as good so what i use is i bought i use um um a bonder so it's a glue it's like a, it's a glue yeah it's really expensive isn't it yeah the glue is wow. expensive but um end of the day the glue is 35 euros in glue but being honest you don't need much of it you but you use amount. glue for everything yeah yeah so what, what you use this for, it's, a, it's called, it's a bridger. So it lets you join one material to the other and it creates a perfect bond. Second, you need to have the right uh, external plaster mix. Now I use a cow mix. So um, I'll come and have a look at that. I'll just have to unscrew the camera, hang on. Here called X-Stop. Now it's designed to, you can put up to two centimeters thick on the wall. It's also extremely water resistant. And if you, in cooperation with the bonding agent, which is the Siltex bonding agent, which is a PVA, right, onto the wall, it adheres really well. Now, this is probably the best one you can use, in my opinion, by far. Uh, secondly, you also need to have a very good um, wax glue, which, which I use to uh, hold the polystyrene on the wall with. Also, that's very expensive. Yeah. Eb said Rex glue, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, it's called Rex. It's called Rex. Now, I, I use it as a temporary. It goes a long way because you only need a little drop, and I'll be showing you how to use it. And so it's, it's actually T Rex, yeah. it's called. And uh, secondly, you need to have your wire cutters, you need a paintbrush, you need a little scraper. You need an 8 mil gel, power gel. Yeah. Uh, you need to get your wall plugs sorted out, which I use external wall plugs to design for uh, weather so they don't rust, with the uh, screws already in there. Uh, you also need a trowel, uh, so, um, and in, I use this as a hawking board, because I can't find my hawking board. And, uh, and, the second, and also what you need is you need a wire, which is at the bottom here, and you've also got some wood. And I've got a piece of batten wood. Now this is not a piece of batten wood, but it's very important to have it true and always out of the sun because yeah. you can keep reusing this. And make sure you've got also uh, make sure you've got your um, power supply here as well as diving at hand because it's just to be cut. And you also need a very sharp knife or a um, semi knife and a bucket to do all your mixing with. So no. this, this is very important to have everything prepared yeah. and ready. Now, all, when you first start your job to get the finish like this, uh, when you're doing your own your windows and doors, you have to PVA. Uh, you have to. 
So when you go around your windows and doors, you have to make sure the majority, all the paint is all off the wall. Anything that's loose must be off. Now, this is a polystyrene I put on for now, and this is a part of, and this is a part of the frame I'll be working around. As you can tell, we have an issue with this here, which is the motorised for the wall shutters to keep uh, for security. So what we'll be doing is we'll be introducing a bit of polystyrene into this so we're not using too much uh, render along the top because you can't really do very well to this, even if you use a UPVA. Okay, and I'll start doing the job now and we'll come out. UPVA in Portugal is, isn't like the one you get in England. It's uh, not as um, fake as the one you get in England. Now, this is all I'll be using. I now, thought it was thicker, the one that you get here. No, the one in England you get, it's a lot thicker. Oh, right, okay. It's also a lot cheaper, uh, but unfortunately... What, in the UK? Yes, yes. The UK one is, in my, my, my opinion, is super, superb PVA to use. So, what I'm going to do is, which I can do now because the sun's off the wall, uh, I'm prepping up the wall ready for the... Um, blender to go on the wall. So this is how you do it. This creates a bonding agent so it bridges between the both materials. And Little Bell, if you're interested, if you're following Little Bell's progress, she looks a bit big draggled today but her right eye um, she's actually gaining um, a tiny bit of about a tiny bit of sight back on her right eye. Um, she did have a bleed. Um, we don't know if she fell off the sofa or if it's sneezing, but um, so she is. Okay. Oh, Look, so she's going to walk into that. <laughs> So she is gaining a little bit of sight back, the vet said. So we'll just have to see how she goes. Bella! Bella! So one of the main reasons for doing this as well is because um, we cut into the window and uh, there's a bit of a gap, so it'll just make it a lot well, nicer. The original windows themselves were made out of wood and it was all rotted away and they just fell through. Yeah. And we, for security reasons, which is quite safe around here, uh, we, we put shutters up. At the same time, uh, I kind of insisted to put an extra head on, which is the um, mosquito netting. Yeah. So we've had to raise it further forward. This is, this is very important to put on. Now I've measured the distance to make all the windows to seal the same size. So on here, the measurement I just put on my trowel because I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to this. And I just put the measurement here and this is where the base, this is where the batten has to be. So, on this case here, always have this piece of timber, this is your prop wood you'll have your timber up while the uh, T-Rex is going to be sitting. So I don't put a lot of this on because, it, like I say, it is expensive. And I don't want it to go on the outside because it can disturb the plaster if, it went, if it's washing out too much. That's all you need of this. And then you have to put your cap on. So what I've done is I put a little tiny bit of T-Rex glue on the batting wood, not a lot, and make sure the T-Rex glue does not go on the outside of the wood, which is going to be facing in. Because if it's if it's glued just into the wall where you render in, you can actually pull your render off the wall. Make sure that is there. The batten then goes here, like so. This is a line I made here. And what I then do is I get the spirit level. I 
put it on to make sure it's true. And I use this to pop it up just for now because it doesn't take long to dry. It literally dries in minutes. So it literally dries in minutes. It does. Now I'll be putting the polystyrene around the frame uh, to marry in with all the rest of the um, framework to marry in with this one here. A little guide line. And this is the polystyrene I'll be using for what I'm doing with. Now, the, the important side is always the side which I'm not cutting. So, that'd be nice. So the rough edge there, you're not using that, no. that's going to the outer side, is that what you're saying? Yeah, the, rough, the outer side is the... What I'm doing is I'm putting the gated to the in the um, gated glue onto this. Again, you don't need a lot of it because it is very very strong. That's all you need. I always use a piece of wood or a box. Now this was the box I got from the blinds and it works out a lovely little gate to go along the side. So what I'm doing now is I put that there like this. Adjust the bottom. Simple as that, very simple. Because that's your framework. Now, polystyrene's good because it's very easy to take off and it's super cheap to buy. It's like two, three euros for a piece. Uh, and they use it for insulation here. Now, I don't like using this for insulation because I think it's got quite a flammable nature to it. Um, um, so that's on here. Now, I'm gonna be working on getting the, the shape to go out the side and down. Around. Now it must have to be. You, you've side. gone wrong. Why have I gone wrong? You did it before. You have to take that centerpiece out. It's not wide so far. Oh, did you push it in? Okay, so what I've done is I've got this here. The, uh, the wife just pointed out I made a slight mistake. I made the bottom a little bit too big. So she made me read this. That's what wires are from. So, that is the shape of the sill. Very simple, very easy to do. Now, all I do is I follow it all the way around. Same formula all the way around. And this is the casting mount for the. Um, Now it's taken 15 to 20 minutes to crack up this, the framework around. Now you can have your architrave all the way around any size you want. You can go as thick as you like. Now this is, as I say, this has been T-Rexed in. Now what I've done is, because of the steel and metal behind here, this is where the uh, shutter is, for the walling shutter. Uh, the uh, the, the uh, plaster, uh, the render, we call it cal here in Portugal, um, it's so thick it would probably find difficulty grabbing even with a PVA at the back. 
So what you do is you get the polystyrene, you uh, cut it in the middle to make it quite jagged and you T-Rex it onto the wall. Now don't worry about using polystyrene on this section here because it's used as an insulator as well and it's quite water resistant. So then I put uh, PVA along the top to give it a grab. So when I do render onto it, one, it won't be so thick and two, it will pull and it won't bubble out. It's a, it's a bonus, it's a win situation. Secondly, uh, for added grab, I have put wall plugs into the wall here. Let me have a look. And what I'm doing is using uh, screws that do not rust, uh, preferably zinc or um, uh, any screw that doesn't rust or galvanise would work on this because you don't want the rust pulling out into the concrete thing. So that's going to go in like this and this, this again gives it added grip because it will be 25 kilos to 30 quick kilos on on this side of the wall holding on so it gives it a nice little uh, grab onto the wall mm. so i'm just finishing off on this again tonight it is very windy it's been so windy here in the algarve on an evening um i'm not worried about the wind no it is yeah Because if you get an earth trapper, uh, you don't want the plaster coming off the wall, the vendor coming off the wall. And this will absolutely stop anything coming off. And even cracking. Mistake. Now, what I do is, I got some wire here, and you have to remember, you have to cut the wire, because you don't want it rusting. Now wrap it around here, and I take it, so it goes all the way across, like so. Back down again. Obviously you don't want it protruding no, your you frame where... Yeah, you don't want it coming out of the plaster uh, and the render. And I'm going to cut that with my pliers here. Now, it's, it's up to, um, it's up to uh, the individual if you want to go all the way around. You can, you can actually go all the way around this. But you must remember to PVA the wire so it seals it. Uh, although the render I am using, I am putting PVA in the render as well, uh, which will waterproof it and will actually um, help prevent this from rusting as well. So I'm going to loop that around again. Like so. And what this will do is that it'll wrap into the plaster and it will hold everything in place. So my next job is, this can come out because it's holding now. Because it only takes 10 minutes to dry. And my next job now is to render it. Now, with a little bit of PVA I've got left from uh, mixing in, I'm going to now edit into the, the mix. So I've got a little tub here, which I've got here. I put it in, just a little tiny bit was left over because there's no waste on this. I add the water, always add the water at first. Now I'm only adding about four litres of water to this. I'm going to get my paintbrush and I'm going to clean it. 
so I'm not going to move my paint. Okay, so imagine this. This is this is white. Granco is white in Portugal. Now my mixer, I actually bought my mixer uh, a couple of days ago, and my hand mixer. So I'm having to use my charge, rechargeable cordless drill, which isn't the best thing to use, but it does work. Okay. So you have to remember, the wall is PVA. So now I'm going to use, I'm using, because I've lost my hawk, which I need to get a new one, I'm using my tiling trowel. Uh, as a hook, and I'm gonna render this on. Now, if you can look at this, the nails are actually what's gonna help you grab as well. So the nails stop it from pulling out. So we'll come back um, when you've uh, cracked on a little bit, or it might even be dark, I think it's about half past eight at the moment, so... Yeah, you have to work at this time because it's just too hot in the day. Yeah. It's a nightmare working in the daytime day here. Everything has to be inside, and even inside it can be quite warm. Yeah. Well, that's looking really nice, Abes. Sorry about the rubbish, we haven't tidied up yet. But, what are you doing? You so, you've okay. got... I've took the frame around, the, um, off the um, window. Yeah. Uh, and what I'm doing is, I'm just brushing off old and loose, with a soft brush, a very soft brush, because it's had all night to dry. It hasn't cured fast, because I don't do it in the daytime, because if it cures too fast, it, it, can, it could cause little cracks and so on. And yeah. this way, I can actually see any imperfections which I might have missed out on. Yeah. So, uh, I want a stone finish, so I don't want it to be a true finish, and I want it to look a little bit coarse, because it looks nice. Natural, yeah. natural stone effect looks really nice. So I'm just cleaning up all the debris, and if along the edges, Sometimes you don't actually, the, the mix never gets into the grooves of the corners. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm covering up all the areas what the um, blender or cow might not have got into. So you just use a little tiny scraper to get into the corners. And you, see. and you just finish it off with a little brush to make it nice and trim. Now this, if you bought a cast already made, it'll probably take you back a couple of hundred euros at least. Yeah. And this, in reality, has cost virtually nothing. Yeah. Just a bit of time. How much do, would you say, roughly? Well, um, rough, roughly, this, again, um, uh, you have to use the nails. Yeah, if you, uh, when it doesn't hold very well onto the wall, because you're going too thick on it, it's always advisable to put the wire in between the screws. Yeah. And you just loop it around to create a cage for it to adhere to. Yeah. Uh, if, it's, if you're not going to go above an inch, 
uh, the screws are plenty of screws are all plugged in yeah really well. and it is about an inch thick isn't it yeah, it's, it's a good inch thick so in normal the rule of thumb you shouldn't really go an inch thick the rule of thumb you should put a first coat on let it dry until it's a little bit tacky then put a second coat on mm. but we've got away with this uh, yeah. as a whole solid coat uh, yeah and also um i said to abe um can you see here you want to have like a little line across just so it looks like he hasn't done it yet just so oh gosh just so it looks like it's been one um one solid piece one no one piece at the bottom then um one at the side and then one at the top so it does look like the proper stone effect yeah i'm just, I'm just going over the areas which now this again uh this is last night's mix um now because it was hot last night the mix is still okay and it's also got um pva in it so it will adhere pretty well to this so i'm just going to go along the top and the bits what may have broken off as i've taken polystyrene off i'm just touching it up now i like the broken bits so I, I think it adds a bit of character but Angela doesn't like it. Well, I like it to a degree, but you don't want it to look too rough, do you? Yeah. Uh, I just want to make it look old world. Yeah, it has to look. I uh, want to keep it as up as original Portuguese style. Now, once this is done and it's dried on, dried and you can lightly sand it until I took a bit out of that. Oh, that's and wonderful Ives, well done. Then I have to clean up the mask. Now it is a messy job this. Yeah, very messy. But it's quite easy to get on the floor. Little Bella's, oh, I'm in the sunshine. Little Bella's come out. Needs a bit of a wash this morning, look ever so be gold. Because she's been having eye drops, so she needs a good wash. So the windows on the two sides are done now. It just leaves the door to finish off. And there are electrical points for the ground lighting I put in here. And here. Then I have to put the, hopefully get some Santa Caterinas to put on the floor around here. As you know, I've had to put the bricks here across here because Belle's pretty blind. I don't want her falling off the edge. Poor, poor little girl. But I'm very pleased with the mouldings. It's come out exceptionally well.